It's December 26th, 2024. It's the 361st day of the year. I hope that you guys had a good Christmas. It's the day after Christmas now, and we've got to jump right back into hyper-focusing on the weather here because we've got a lot of big-time pattern changes on the way and also some pretty dangerous severe weather setting up for today into tomorrow and the next day and then probably multiple days after that. Once again, starting today, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted about 20 million people under a slight risk of severe weather from Dallas down to Houston, Lake Charles, Shreveport. You guys are included in this and then a little bit of Southern Arkansas. This is mostly driven by a wind and hail threat, but there is a tornado threat as well. And uh, there's a part of me that believes that there's a very small chance that if later today or in, in a couple of hours, uh, honestly, uh, whenever the latest outlook comes out, the conditions are looking just right. They might actually upgrade the tornado probabilities a little bit. Today's system is the kind of system that would traditionally spark some tornadoes in the deep south okay but right now we've got that five percent probability for all those places that I just called out I do believe that we're gonna see at least a couple of tornadoes today and if everything lines up just perfectly there's a very small chance that a, at least a couple of those tornadoes could be strong so make sure you have a way of getting warnings today make sure you know what you're gonna do when that tornado warning comes through it's gonna start really soon in fact the severe weather event will probably be in progress for today by the time you're watching this video so make sure you've got a way to get those warnings. Here's what the radar could look like today around 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central. We've got a big cluster of severe thunderstorms down here in southeast Texas. Once again, this is happening now. Large hail damaging winds are going to be a problem, especially around Tyler, Texas at this time. Moving into Houston a couple hours after this. I think the farther south you go along this cluster of storms, the better chance that we're going to have of seeing some more isolated or discrete nature with the storms. And that's going to be where we have the best chance of maybe seeing some rotating storms. So right there around Houston, points north and east a little bit. I think that's where we've got the best chance of seeing some tornadoes, maybe around Beaumont and the uh, border between Texas and Louisiana there. But even farther north, all the way up there into southern portions of Arkansas, we're going to have a, a really good chance of seeing some hail and of course some damaging winds as this is going to turn into a pretty robust squall line this evening. Here we are at 9 p.m. We're going to have a very strong line of storms from around Hot Springs, Arkansas, all the way down through through Shreveport down towards the uh, Gulf Coast. This is where some places could see 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. Make sure you are ready for that. And then maybe even some embedded tornadoes even at this point. By the time these storms cross the Mississippi River around 1 a.m., things are going to start calming down a little bit. We still could see some severe weather out there around Vicksburg, uh, down a little bit past uh, uh, Lafayette and Baton Rouge. But uh, for the most part, the severe weather threat will be calming down a lot. And we're just going to have this blob of rain moving into the Tennessee Valley here during the early morning hours tomorrow. Now, um, as we go farther into the future, there is going to be a, a little chance that we see some re-sparking of the severe weather over here during the heating of the day tomorrow as the frontal system continues to move east. Uh, there's a little pocket of cool air back here that's going to be moving into some warm air that's building up out in front of this line right here, and that could spark some more severe weather tomorrow, but it doesn't look like that's going to be quite as robust as what we could see today. And then as we go even farther into the future, you can see here that um, as we go through Saturday, early in the morning, things are calming down quite a bit as all of this energy moves up into the north and east, maybe causing some icy conditions up here in the interior northeast, but for the most part, everything's going to be winding down a little bit, at least for this moment. Uh, there's going to be another storm system that comes in right after this that's going to cause a very similar problem. So here is the severe weather outlook for tomorrow. Once again, some lingering severe weather over here from Jackson, Mississippi, back down towards Lake Charles. New Orleans over towards Mobile, Alabama. This is mostly going to be wind and hail. And then Saturday, we've got another slight risk here in Louisiana and Mississippi going all the way over towards Alabama. And this is not the same image that I just showed you for the severe weather outlook for today. This is a, a completely different storm system. And as you saw on the uh, HRRR model that we were just showing, uh, there's nothing here. This is actually going to happen Saturday evening as a completely different storm system gets its act together in Texas and moves east. So let me show you really quickly what's going on here. Thursday, December 26th. This is today. This is the jet stream, right? This is the little kink in the jet stream that's allowing for the severe weather today. We've got cold air kind of pouring into the trough, and then we've got lift out in front of the trough, allowing for warm air to kind of come up from the Gulf of Mexico. Where those two air masses meet right here, where we got these really strong winds wrapping around the bottom of the jet stream, that's where we got the best chance of seeing severe weather. So we've already talked about this. Watch what happens. As that moves east, the storm threat moves east. And then another 
another pretty significant kink in the jet stream starts shaping up. As we go into Saturday, early in the day, we've got a much more broad kink, I guess you can say, uh, in the jet stream here, allowing for much more cool air and much more warm air to kind of mix together here. And that's what's actually going to spark our severe weather setup on Saturday, which to me at this point looks more robust and more concerning than the one that we're talking about today. So over here in Mississippi, make sure you guys are weather aware on Saturday as isolated, damaging winds, large hail, and some tornadoes are definitely going to be possible, especially in the evening. This is going to be one of those systems that's going to be a nighttime problem, okay, from 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. That uh, time frame, that's where we're going to have potential supercells and maybe even nocturnal tornadoes. All right, so going even farther into the future, one thing that we've got to take note of here is not only the severe weather threat, but look at all this rain. We're going to have a ton of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico just kind of dumping itself over the Tennessee Valley, up into the Appalachians, over towards the East Coast as well. A lot of these places are going to welcome the rain as we are in a drought through a lot of this area. But one area that doesn't quite need it as much is going to be the Pacific Northwest, and there's going to be a lot of rain and snow over the next 100 hours or so, pretty much nonstop in Northern California, Western Oregon, and Southwestern portions of Washington. This is going to lead to some flooding problems. Weather Prediction Center has gotten a slight risk of excessive rainfall for today and tomorrow down here in Arkansas, down through Texas and Louisiana. A little bit of Mississippi is included in that. Watch those creeks and streams. And then as you can see, as we go into the day three outlook, we've got a slight risk up here in Northern California and southwestern portions of Oregon as well. Watch out for landslides and uh, some occasional debris flows and stuff like that, as this is going to be a, just a continued problem with the massive inundation of Pacific moisture over here along the western slopes of the mountains. And it's not just rain, we've got snow too. And your eyes are not deceiving you right here. Some places over the next 70 hours or so in the highest elevations of the Rockies and the Cascades will receive over 100 inches of snow. So we're getting some snowpack uh, on those mountains. Uh, and this is going to be one of the more significant uh, snow systems of the season so far for some of the peaks out here. Uh, so make sure you are ready for that. Even some of the valleys are going to be getting into some of the snow in Idaho and portions of Wyoming. So this is going to be a pretty intense storm system. Everywhere that doesn't see snow, obviously, the closer to sea level you get, you know, the better chance that you have of seeing rain. That's where we're expecting to see maybe some isolated flash flooding problems. And uh, yeah, the snow train has left the station. Speaking of snow, for the first time in a long time, looking at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, not everybody is painted in orange. Uh, in fact, there's a large area of the southeastern United States that is expected to see below average temperatures between January 2nd and January 8th, 2025. The pattern is changing. We've been talking about this for a while. We've had some hiccups. We've had some almost pattern changes, but this is the real deal, I think, here uh, where we're going to be locked into a colder pattern on the East Coast for a significant period of time. It starts in early January and it will expand from there. So get ready for some colder temperatures as we go once again from January 2nd into January 8th. In the meantime, though, between now and then, it's still going to be above average uh, as we deal with these severe weather inducing storms that continue to come through. All right. So with the severe weather today, we are on standby mode here at the weather house. Uh, we are going to be keeping an eye on things. If it looks like the tornado situation is going to be a little bit more intense, we might go live here on this channel. But even if we don't go live, y'all bots going to be live over on the 24 seven channel. So make sure you go over here and check this out. Every single severe thunderstorm warning, every single tornado warning, every single storm report, every single anything that happens in the weather world at all you're going to know the moment that it happens on this stream through yalba and then it's going to walk you through it tell you all the details and all that stuff and it never goes offline so if you need a resource to you know get those warnings and all that kind of stuff this will be available for you over on the ryan hall y'all extra channel there's a link in the description and i believe y'all bot's going to be pretty busy this evening once again we're going to be here and, and i'm still going to go live on my channel if needed but right now it's not looking like it's going to be in intense enough for that, but it's one of those situations where anything could happen, so we're going to be standing by. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will see you in the next one. I'll probably have another uh, video tomorrow talking about uh, Saturday again. Turn on notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Whoop.